Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Yep, Head is still injured. If you're interested in the explanation of how that happened, that's in Q&A part one from a couple of weeks ago. So yeah, go back and check that out. Hopefully it's not too distracting for you guys. Anyway, today it's time to give some monitor recommendations. Turns out our last video on the best gaming monitors of 2019 is one of the most popular videos we've ever done on the channel. So yeah, it seems like you guys really like some advice on which monitors to buy. It's one of the things I get asked a lot about in our Patreon exclusive Discord community as well. So if you aren't a Patreon member, it's never too late to sign up where you can chat to me about what things you should buy. Anyway, this video is going to be specifically about recommending IPS gaming monitors. Hopefully this isn't too too much of a surprise, but it probably was in the title and thumbnail. But why IPS monitors specifically? Well, they are some of the most sought after monitors on the market for most use cases. Gamers, professionals, office use, you name it, people love their IPS monitors. And that's for a good reason, especially for gaming. IPS provides a fantastic balance between all the key aspects of a monitor. You get great color performance, usually in the form of wide color gamuts, easy calibration, excellent viewing angles, and above average uniformity, plus contrast ratios that while not as strong as VA displays, still outperform most TNs. Then you add on to that decent motion handling through reasonably fast response times, high refresh rates, and often support for backlight strobing as well. IPS is basically the only type of current generation LCD monitor that delivers strong performance in both colors and motion. TNs are quite typically delivering elite motion performance better than IPS, but fall away significantly with colors, especially viewing angles. VAs have pretty good colors and best-in-class contrast ratios, but usually deliver worse response times, so aren't as good for high refresh gaming. With IPS delivering this often perfect balance, they are a premium high-end display category. If you had to put each tech into a price category, TNs are usually your entry-level products, VA takes on the mid-range, then for the best of the best, high-end buyers, you'll be after an IPS. That's not to say IPS monitors are poor value because there are some great buyers on the market as we'll go through in this video, but if you want the best of the best, be prepared to spend a few hundred dollars more than other monitor types. As is usual for our top five videos, we've split our recommendations into five separate categories covering what most people will be interested in. So let's kick things off with a look at 1080p. The 1080p IPS monitors targeting gamers are a relatively new entrant to the market, which is surprising given how long we've had 1080p monitors now. While 120Hz and 144Hz 1080p displays have become widespread in laptop sizes like 15 and 17 inches over the last few years, it's only really in 2019 and the later parts of 2018 that desktop class high refresh IPS monitors have joined the party. As such, there are relatively few options available right now. The main ones at 27 inches are the Acer VG271P and ASUS VG279Q, along with the LG 27GL650 and AOC 27G2. At 24 inches, we're down to even fewer options, just the Acer VG240YP and AOC 24G2. Of the 27 inches, the Acer, ASUS, and LG all appear to use the same AU Optronics AHVA, aka IPS panel. The AOC 27G2 is the standout in that it uses a less common Panda panel. The 24 inch models also use one of these Panda panels. I personally haven't tested these panels yet, but the fact they are only native 6 bit rather than native 8 bit like you get with the AU Optronics models is already a red flag for me, and even though a monitor like the AOC 27G2 is cheaper than alternatives, I'm not comfortable recommending it as a best gaming monitor, especially as IPS displays are a premium product. However, I have tested the AU Optronics panel in the Acer VG271P and found it to deliver very good performance, especially with properly tuned overdrive. Excellent viewing angles and uniformity as expected, but an average greater gray response time in the five millisecond range is also very strong from this panel type, putting it marginally ahead of VA offerings. Unlike cheaper VA alternatives, it also has the benefit of being flat, which I personally always appreciate. Unfortunately, I can't recommend the VG271P specifically as you cannot use the optimal overdrive mode and adaptive sync simultaneously, which is a deal breaker for me. It also has the worst stand of the three main contenders. This leaves the ASUS VG279Q and the LG 27GL650F, which given they are both very similar and appear to use the same high quality panel, I'd be pretty happy recommending. Pricing for these monitors varies a lot depending on when you look. The VG279Q has a slightly lower MSRP of three. $330 versus $350 for the LG option, but often the LG's actual retail price is cheaper. Don't really have a preference here given they have nearly the same feature sets as well. Be on the lookout for sales and I'd probably just grab the cheaper option here. At 
at 1440p, the choice is clear. LG have the best performing monitor on the market, and it's the 27GL850. This monitor generated a lot of fanfare when it was announced, and for good reason. LG, using a brand new IPS panel, were promising response times near the same level as TN panels, touting a magical 1 millisecond figure without the use of backlight strobing modes. When also paired with a 27 inch size and 144Hz refresh rate, the 27GL850 was looking like a good buy. While in practice the monitor can't actually hit 1 millisecond response times with acceptable levels of overshoot, its overall motion handling performance is better than other IPS monitors of these specs. It gets pretty darn close to some TN panels I've tested, while retaining a lot of the features that make IPS great, such as excellent viewing angles and a wide 98% DCI-P3 color gamut. In fact, in terms of response times, it significantly outperforms other popular monitors like Gigabyte's AD27QD. The AD27QD isn't bad, it's just this LG monitor with its new generation panel is crushing the market. Of course, the 27GL850 also comes with many other features you'll be after. It's G-Sync compatible, so it's automatically supported with NVIDIA GPUs, but of course, this means it also supports adaptive sync, aka free sync, for the AMD GPU users out there. We're getting true 144Hz performance and low frame rate compensation as well. There are some limitations, the biggest being the contrast ratio, which is poor for an IPS monitor and LCDs in general. If you're buying this monitor, it's something you'll have to weigh up. Do you want significantly better response times or a better contrast ratio? Most of the time I choose the better response times for gaming, but if you'd rather go the other route, I'd look into the ASUS PG279Q. That said, the PG279Q is a G-Sync monitor that doesn't deliver variable refresh with AMD GPUs, so those after a free sync monitor might be more tempted by the not quite as good AD27QD. The 27G850 also doesn't have a backlight strobing mode for blur reduction. I personally don't use this sort of feature, but I know it's popular with others. Again, if that's crucial to you, go down the PG279Q route. The best part about the 27GL850 to me is that despite having chart-topping performance, it doesn't come with a huge price premium. In fact, it's cheaper than many other models out there at just $500. Yes, not the absolute cheapest, but both the ASUS and Gigabyte options I've mentioned are often $50 to $100 more expensive. The downside being that this combination of performance and price means it's in hot demand. In fact, it's almost always out of stock or on back order. If you want one, I'd suggest reserving a model as soon as possible. This also means we're unlikely to see any price drops in the near future, although that's fine with me, it's a great buy as it's MSRP. Aside from that, it's worth pointing out that there will be some 27GL850 alternatives that use the same panel or are supposedly going to use the same panel in the near future, such as one from ViewSonic. These could be worth looking out for, especially if you stumble upon this video a few months in the future and these displays are already on the market. Let's say you don't want the absolute best 1080p or 1440p IPS monitors on the market. I mean, $500 for some people is gonna be quite a lot of money, and even $250 or $300 for a mere 1080p display can feel like a lot in 2019. Well, lucky for you, there are quite a number of more affordable options available, perhaps not with the same elite performance as the other products we've been talking about, but yeah, good enough to recommend. If you want a 1440p IPS display, but don't want to spend north of $300, I'd recommend the Pixio PX 275H if you live in a country that Pixio sell to, like the United States. It's not quite a high refresh model like we've seen and been talking about. It doesn't hit 144Hz, but with a maximum refresh of 95Hz and a great series of hardware otherwise, we get adaptive sync, wide gamut, and decent performance, it's a brilliant budget option that straddles the 1080p and 1440p high refresh markets perfectly. The best part is it's only $260, US although due to its high popularity, it is frequently out of stock. It's definitely something I'd be on the lookout for though. If you must have a 1440p 144Hz IPS panel, well, there's a bunch of options right now. One that's gathering a lot of tension is the ViewSonic VX2758 2KP MHD. A terrible product name, but it offers these specs at around $380, which is very cheap. I'm hoping to get one into review soon, so I'm not going to give it a strong recommendation just yet, but it's another product to be aware of given its price and widespread availability. Similar to this ViewSonic monitor is the Acer VG271UP for just $350, 
However, this is a display I'd avoid. I haven't tested it myself, but I don't think I will given there are widespread user reports claiming this monitor suffers from flickering problems. Maybe not when you first buy it, but certainly within a few months seems to be a fairly common occurrence. This is probably a monitor you've come across if you've been doing some research on what to buy given its extremely attractive price. It's often the cheapest with these specs, but yeah, sometimes you get what you pay for. While perhaps not the absolute cheapest monitor out there, one I can vouch for is the Pixio PX7 Prime, which at $430 delivers 1440p, 165Hz with the same Interlux panel as Gigabyte's AD27QD. It's a mid-tier performer, so not at the level of the 27GL850, but it's cheaper, and overall I was really impressed with it. If I was spending about $400, this is what I'd get, but of course stay tuned for that ViewSonic review because that also could be quite a good buy. In the last category, I ended up talking about two or three different options. Well, this won't be the case when talking about ultrawides because there's a clear standout here. The LG 34GK950F uses a new high refresh ultrawide IPS panel from LG, allowing it to pack in a 3440x1440 resolution and 144Hz refresh rate for the first time with this technology. The 34GK950F delivers really strong gaming performance with a greater grey response time average of just 5.14 milliseconds and minimal dark level smearing, which can be an issue with VA alternatives like the MSI MPG 341CQR. On top of that, you get very low input lag and 98% DCI-P3 coverage, which is excellent if you're a fan of wide gamuts. It's a really good panel in a good monitor design with strong gaming performance, all the hallmarks of a best-in-class ultrawide monitor. It's rare to see a perfect display, and this isn't one either. While LG does tout display HDR 400 capabilities, there's no local dimming here, so in practice, we're getting no real HDR experience. That shouldn't take away from what is a stellar SDR monitor, but those after a true HDR ultrawide will need to spend a lot more money. One of the other criticisms I had of the 34GK950F when I reviewed it was the price. This monitor does have an MSRP of $1,200, US which makes it much more expensive than other options, in particular 120Hz variants like the popular Alienware AW3418DW or the Acer X34P. Those are available for around $800, which is a good price for only a small downgrade in performance. However, these days, the 34GK950F is available for as little as $900. Yes, this is still an expensive monitor, $900 is a lot of money to spend, and yes, there are 100Hz variants available for much less, but given this is the best of the best and only $100 more than 120Hz models, I think this current price is much more reasonable. And unlike every other 120Hz model, this LG 144Hz unit supports Adaptive Sync, not G-Sync, which I feel is better as it doesn't lock you into NVIDIA's ecosystem and allows you to switch between GPU vendors in the future when it makes sense to do so. Just be prepared for the GPU requirements of 3440 by 1440 at 144Hz. You'll make even an RTX 2080 Ti cry at ultra settings trying to hit that level of performance. This is definitely a monitor that will serve you well over a number of years and allow you to grow into it as you upgrade your GPU. I tend to struggle recommending monitors in the 4K category because I don't think there are a whole lot of standout options, and those that are really excellent for gaming are also really expensive. My main issue here is that it's hard to find a 60Hz 4K monitor that has strong adaptive sync support, and even then I feel like recommending a 60Hz monitor for gaming in 2019 is really not a good idea. Even if you don't have the hardware to run games natively at high refresh 4K, buying a monitor is about the next 5 years of usage and I wouldn't want to be restricted to just 60Hz. In the meantime, a bit of resolution scaling can bring these 4K high refresh monitors to life with smooth, fluid gameplay on mid-range hardware, so I think it's still worth recommending them. My choice here is the Acer Nitro XV273K, which brings a 27-inch 4K IPS panel at 144Hz to gamers for just $750 these days, which is cheaper than last time I checked by quite a few hundred dollars. It doesn't have the same HDR capabilities as its much more expensive brother in the Predator X27. In fact, the XV273K is not a true HDR panel at all, but it's really hard to ignore the value of the XV273K for gamers that just want a high refresh 4K display. When I reviewed this monitor, I was impressed with the overall performance. It won't blow you away with elite tier response times, 
but it does a decent job. Unfortunately, it is limited to 120 hertz in practice. Getting 144 hertz requires sacrificing adaptive sync and using two display port cables, but 120 hertz is pretty close and still delivers a great high refresh experience if you have the hardware to drive it. I have seen varying reports about the backlight bleed of this monitor, however my unit was personally fine in this regard and it's possible that some buyers are blasting their eyeballs out on the highest brightness where backlight bleed tends to be a more significant or noticeable issue. It's something to be aware of, your mileage may vary, I still think it's a product that I'm comfortable recommending though. Of course, if you have money to burn, I'd step up even further to get the ultimate HDR experience with the Acer Predator X27, which as of right now is the best of the 4K G-Sync Ultimate displays. It's 4K 144Hz like the XV273K, but packs a full array local dimming backlight, offering true HDR performance, which looks phenomenal in supported games. It's quite expensive though at $1,650 US dollars, so it's really meant for high-end buyers. I'd also keep a lookout for the ASUS PG27UQX, which offers a step up in local dimming zone count, and that monitor is supposed to hit the market at any moment now and could be an even better buy. That's it for my IPS monitor recommendation. Sorry to those who just wanted some quick answers here about which products to buy. There are really so many options on the market. I just wanted to dig into which monitors are better and why. Hopefully you're now armed with all the information you need to go out and make a great purchasing choice. As always, you can subscribe for more monitor reviews and we really appreciate the support we get from our patrons who make it possible for us to continue in-depth testing of the latest monitors and PC hardware. That's all for now. Catch you in the next one.